Hello and welcome to Bruce Springsteen Guitar Lessons. Hope you're all staying safe and well during these crazy times. Today's lesson is a live acoustic version of All The Way Home from Devils and Dust. Thanks very much to patron David Pomfret for the request. Also be sure to follow to the end of the video just in case I go through any parts that aren't in the walkthrough. So now what I'll do is play the whole song through and you'll see Tab appear on the screen and then I'll come back and break down all the individual parts. See you in a bit. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what we're gonna do is go through all the individual parts. Okay, so this version is based on the main music video that's on YouTube for this. It's a live acoustic version. And what's happening is you've got the capo second fret and a double D tuning, which basically means e, the E string drops to a D and then the other E string drops to a D. So what's happening is the strings without the capo on are D, A, D, G, B, E. Cool, okay, so what we'll do, let's go through the main, uh, main four bar 
riffs basically. So what's happening is these four bar riffs you can kind of hear on the uh, the normal album version kind of loop around quite a lot in this song, okay? And then they're just slightly altered for certain sections. So what's happening is he's starting off going like that. It's called the arpeggiated chord uh, on a D, kind of D5 chord, okay? So what's happening is you put your first finger, second fret G, middle finger, third fret B. Uh, it starts off with that. And then what you've got again is quavers pretty much one and two and three and four and quavers or eighth notes. Uh, and then you've got, so you've got one, two and. And then you've got on the three and you're going, just take your first finger off. And then for the last two beats in the bar, you're doing, you're putting your third finger on the D string and blocking out the um, G string. Okay, so all you want ringing here is, are the D strings, is the D string, the B string, and then the E string. Again, I'm kind of using my third finger to, to sort of touch the A string to block that off as well. Otherwise you get kind of some unwanted strings. So what you've got, you've got one, two, and three, and four, and. And then you've basically got, uh, take your third finger off, and then, put your third finger back on and then take it off again. Then I put a kind of a ghost note in the tab. This is the ones with brackets on the outside. So it's slightly softer, but again, don't be too fussy on that. And then upstroke uh, on that, back on that D kind of five chord and then down up. Or again, can target the, um, the uh, higher pitch strings there as well, uh, as I've shown in the tab in the walkthrough. Again, don't forget you can, any, any YouTube video, not even my channel, all YouTube videos, you click on the cog icon and you can kind of slow it down, um, which is quite a cool little feature. So obviously you've seen the tab pop in and out. So you'll be able to slow it down and, and that might help uh, playing along with the tab as well. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go through these first two bars. So you've got this one, two and three and four and one and two and three and and obviously at speed, it sounds really cool. So it's getting that timing and when to change uh, and changing in the right positions. And then basically the next two bars are just simply the same thing pretty much, but the first two strums, you can just kind of do the bassier notes of that D5 chord. And then do this, and then um, so this is bar three we're doing. Uh, so bar three is pretty much the same as bar one, apart from that, without that. So the first three bars, I play that. Okay, so now what we've got is a um, fourth bar, it's a slightly different pattern. So here we're going on. Uh, that one where you just got your middle finger down on the third fret B and then third fret fourth fret D string up stroke and then uh, back to the D5 two and three and four and so that bar again so this is bar four one and two and three and four and okay so the first four bars start like uh, go like this so you've got one two and three and four and one and two one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and cool and then basically so I call that kind of the main riff the four bar main riff what I also do is put the song structure up on the screen um, hopefully that helps as well and we'll kind of go through what I mean by some of the things I've referred to in the song structure again don't forget the song structure will also be in the description okay so then that's kind of the main four bar riff with a uh, what I call the arpeggiated chord, where you're making sure you can hear the strings individually, basically. Uh, and he'll do that later on in the song as well. Okay, and then you've just got the main four bar riff, which is basically the same thing, but you're kind of doing this at the start instead of doing that arpeggiated chord. Okay, so you've got the, the, the main kind of, the first four bars of the whole song.
and then you've got the same thing, sort of the main four bar riff without that, with the, at the start instead of the, that. Okay, so I'll play the main four bar riff, which is one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. It just sounds really cool, that tuning. Uh, it just sounds really nice, really kind of thick sounding. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is kind of go through the verse sections. So all four verses are pretty much the same in structure. They're eight bars each. And I think he's doing something like this. Well, he's kind of got that D5 chord again. But again, it's really stripped down in volume as well. So dynamics and you're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So suggested some either mutes or dampening the strings a bit on the tab. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you can kind of do that kind of uh, sort of sensation. It's quite a percussive sound that Bruce uses. And he will vary this up um, throughout the song a little bit, but this is the main gist and feel free to embellish it as well. Uh, because every time you'll play this song live, it'll, it'll change it up, you know, so it won't be the same thing twice. So one and two and three. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So basically what I've suggested here is you're kind of like playing the bassier notes of that D5 chord. So one and, again, all quavers, one and two and three and four and, or eighth notes. So the first beat, you've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So basically beats two, three, four of the first bar, you're going one and two and three and four, sorry, uh, two and three and four and. So basically you've got the mute on the downstroke and then the chord on the upstroke. So it's a really cool um, rhythm. So you've got one open strings to start with, one and two and three and four and, and it carries on with that, one and then one and two and three, and then I suggested going up, down, up. And that will finish this two bar phrase, okay? So I'll do that nice and slowly. So this is the, the two bar phrase in the verses. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So, okay, so it's not too bad. Once you get the hang of that kind of, again, it doesn't have to be exact all the time. You can do a rest instead of a kind of a percussive mute if you prefer to do that as well. Bruce will mix it up quite a lot. Of course, that's the, the uh, verse sections. And then this is the strumming pattern that I've suggested to do in the harmonica solo. So basically what you've got is you've got this uh, D5 over A, or you could even play all six, uh, all six strings because of the tuning, really thick sounding chord. Uh, and basically I've suggested doing two crotchets or quarter notes that's one, two, and then four quavers or eighth notes, uh, three and four and. So one, two, three and four and. And then um, another four eighth notes or quavers. One and two and. Then a tie, so you miss a downstroke. Uh, that's an eighth note. And then you gotta go up, down, up. Again, good strumming pattern to learn. Again, gets you working on your different strumming patterns. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Do that one more time. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Strumming wise, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up. And then basically there's four rounds of that with the harmonica solo. Okay, so let's take a look at the chorus sections. So we've got some new chords here. So this is what I think he's playing, which is a G over B chord. Uh, middle finger, second fret A string, and then little finger, third fret B string. Okay, so this is the first, uh, the G over B bar in the first chorus. So you've got this. Down, 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 up, down, up. Two crotchets uh, or quarter notes and then four quavers or eighth notes. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and. Uh, and the first and the third strums kind of just focus on the bass kind of notes. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and. and then what you're gonna do is add your third finger to the third fret of the A string, and this will create a C sus two chord, which sounds really nice. Uh, and this is the strumming pattern that I think is happening here. So you're going down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the first and the fourth uh, strums aim to focus on the bassier kind of notes. You've got down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So one crotchet or quarter note, 
followed by six quavers or eighth notes. You've got down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So those first two bars of the first chorus go one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. And then what I've said is, is a two bar riff, okay? So that basically means the first two bars of your normal four bar riff. So you've got the That makes sense. Okay, so this is the first four bars of the first chorus. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Okay, and then what you've got, again, maybe bring down the dynamics a little bit, volume level for this next bit. You've got this G over B chord again, but pretty much quavers the whole way through. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Then, I'm not sure if this is intentional, he's just done this to mix it up live, but he's got, um, he's only playing three beats this next bar, which basically means bar three, four, uh, one and two and three and. Okay, and then what's happening, he's then doing the um, four bar riff, but cutting off the first two beats, okay? Because this, this um, four bar riff, imagine the first bar is th uh, three, four, it's only three beats, and you're cutting off the first two strums, okay? So instead of going one and two and three and four and, you're just going one and two and three and, and then you carry on with that four bar riff. Uh, okay, so what we've got is you've got uh, one, two, so this is the whole of the first chorus. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. One, two, three, four. Okay, you can fill up, you know, mix up the strumming a little bit as well. So, um, then we've got a second chorus, okay? So the second chorus is basically you've got, um, it's pretty much the same thing as the first chorus, apart from without those two bars of three, four, okay? So I'll just play that second chorus without those um, uh, bits that are kind of sh shortened a little bit. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and and three and four and one and two 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 and three and four. Cool. Okay, so that's the second chorus, and then the th third chorus. You've basically got the kind of the um, the two bars of the the B, uh, G over B, the C sus two, uh, which is basically. Um, so you can either do it like this, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and, or you can just carry on with quavers. You can go one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Uh, and that's basically, that's done, those two bars are done twice in the third chorus. So you've got, um, and then what you've got in the third chorus, so you do those two bars twice, and then to the four bar riff, okay? So let's play the third chorus all the way through. So you've got uh, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. And four, and one, two, and three. And okay, cool. So now what you've got is the f fourth uh, chorus. Okay, so the fourth chorus, what you've got is you've got the G uh, over B bar and the C sus two bar. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, and then you've got um, the two bar riff, but basically what happens is it's, uh, it stops, he stops halfway between. Um, so I call this two bar riff version two on the uh, song structure. Okay, so you've got this G over B, one, two, three, and four, and. And then he stops, okay? So it's kind of like that, that third chorus where you are repeating the G and B in C sus 2, twi uh, so you're doing that twice, but just with a different rhythm. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. So this is quite a cool little bit. So you're basically doing the same thing uh, as you've done previously, the G in the, over the B in the C sus 2, but it's just slightly different. So you've got one, two, three, and four, and. And then stop, two, three, up, down, up. So strum counting wise, you're gonna go one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. 
Okay, and strumming wise, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, and then you've got the four bar riff. So on. So I'll play the whole of the four, uh, fourth chorus, okay? So you've got four and one, two and three and four and one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four and one, two and three and four. Okay, so let's now take a look at the fifth chorus. Okay, so what you've got is a G over B bar again. So that's uh, one, two, three, and four, and, and the C sus two bar twice. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Then the four bar riff. And two bars of the G over B. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so that's just the two bar riffs. Again, just chop that four bar riff in half and do the first two bars. And that line is actually done three times. Again, remember to check the song structure. So this is the um, third line of the fifth chorus. You're gonna do it three times. So four bars, three times. So you've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Second time. time and then you do that two bar riff again okay so let's now take a look at the outro section so basically what happens is he's basically doing that arpeggiated chord again and then he's kind of focusing on kind of the middle kind of strings or from the D the G the B and the E strings um, picking kind of almost kind of half picking, half strumming, if that makes sense. So you're going one, and doing the main kind of four bar riff, but adding that arpeggiated chord on the first bar and the third bar. So you've got this. So what you can do is cut bars two and four short to make sure you get that arpeggio, which is what I've done in the tab, so I've got one, uh, so one, two, and three, and four, and uh, one, and two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And you basically do that twice, and then what's happening, he's kind of doing the same sort of thing with downstrokes. It's kind of, this is all kind of building up to the outro. Uh, so he's basically doing it all downstrokes and kind of um, playing around the strumming. So you've basically got that main four bar riff uh, twice here. And at the end of the kind of the last two bars of the second round, kind of what you want to kind of build up that strumming. So you've got this, uh, something like this. comes back in with a harmonica and you got the C sus2 chords you got one two and three and four and G over B one two and three and four and they kind of start the four bar riff but only do the first uh, bar of it and then you've got some he's doing something like this down up down up just to finish off so I've just got that D5 chord all six strings down up down Cool, so let's go through that whole of the outro section again. So you've got...
of course that's all the parts again don't forget to uh, slow down the walkthrough uh, to put all these parts together use the song structure if that helps of course I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, thanks again for David Pomfret for the request uh, any questions or comments feel free to let me know give this uh, video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't already uh, and if you want any of the backing tracks or guitar profiles uh, and uh, things like that requests head over to Patreon to check the tiers over there uh, but have a great weekend and stay safe and I will see you next week thanks very much cheers bye